Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome to Tea Talk Toronto. I'm your girl, Nine Canacol, sipping and spilling the tea. Today, we're going to talk about know your rights. Oh, yes. Uh, Toronto police, listen to me or whoever police. Just listen, okay? If you stop me and you say you need my license, my registration, and my insurance, I have to get it from the glove compartment, which is on the passenger side. Okay, it's not on the driver's side. So when I'm leaning over to get my stuff, don't be putting your hand on your weapon and then anything like boom, boom. Okay. Sip and spill. But before we get started, I just want you guys to grab your coffee, grab your tea, come and sip and spill with me. Hi there and welcome to Tea Talk with your host, Naimka Nicole. Subscribe, like and share. Tea Talk, where we sip and spill that tea on celebrity gossip, pop culture, and mainstream media. She'll be sipping and spilling that tea. Tea Talk with Nayimka Nicole. Welcome back. Before we get started, I just want to say something. I do not work for Toronto Police. I am not a Toronto Police. I know some police. Oh, yes. I know some Toronto police. I know some Barry police. What's up, Hamilton, Durham, LAPD, NYPD. Okay. I, I'm just saying, I am a youth justice worker. I work for young offenders. What does that mean? Okay, let me just explain. I work with youths ages 13 to 17 who is in conflict with the law. So, for example, if they assault someone, they go to court, the court is going to put them into a program, okay, because they're young offenders. When they come to the program, they might just happen to see me. I will teach them violence prevention. I may teach them anger management. I, you, you know what I'm saying? Victim impact, etc., etc. That's what I do. I report to the probation officer if they don't show up. Now, if you don't show up, I have your Instagram. <laughs> I call in you. I'm like, yo, what's going on? Okay. I need a story because <laughs> I need to know why you ain't here. We ain't going to do that. If they are charged with G, I don't get involved. I, I, I do the little petty crime. Okay. If I know them, I cannot work with them. So I'll give you an example. I used to run Stop and Imagine Toronto Anti-Bullying Youth Association, and I had a couple of youths that was in the program at the time. For some reason, they decide to go act up, okay? They act up, get themselves in problem, and then now we have to be in court. Here's the thing. Just imagine, okay? You work for the youth justice system. Your kid is in conflict with some others in a group that you run. Let me tell you something. I was like, what is going on? The first thing I did, told my boss. I said, listen, I just want you to know, um, this is what had happened. This is what transpired. And I want you to know how do we maneuver. He had a thing, okay? Where she, she was very like, she said, we understand. This is not your fault. This is why we're here. We are here for prevention. I appreciate you coming. I swear to God, I thought I was going to lose my job. I'm like, let me tell you something. The good thing about it, that's why I talk about the baby bonus. And I was saying, I've been giving him money <laughs> since he was two. So we had enough money to get a lawyer to pay to like, you know what I'm saying? To get rid of this problem. I'm like, listen, never got into a problem again. Knock on wood. But at the same time, I understand. So here, here what happened. So when um, they was all, you know, get the assigned to do certain things, I'm going to work, right? Boom, up the elevator. Boom, boom, open up on the floor. I'm walking. I looked through the glass. I was like, no, this is not happening. I went straight to my boss. I'm like, I know him. <laughs> She's like, I'm like, I can. So in that sense, he didn't see me, you know, but I saw him. But here what happened. I was not allowed to run the program that day because of the conflict of interest. So some of you out there who always want to talk about people snitching and this and that. Let me tell you something. Once I know you, if you is in conflict with something, I can't even talk about it. If you live in an area where I live and you're getting problems, I have to act like I know nothing. So, and for those youths, they know. Because we've been through this, 
everything is resolved, you know, and life goes on. Some of them, like it says, they graduate. Some is singing, some is rapping, some is dancing, some is doing. But that was just one situation that sometimes when you don't know you're right, you don't know, right? People think you're snitch. People think you're doing this. And I'm like, hello, there's a disclosure. Read the disclosure before you jump to conclusion and that's very important when it comes to knowing your right so that's what i do i work with the young offenders okay so that's what, and we do violence prevention is the mandate you know drugs prevention etc etc okay does that sum it up i also work alongside some of the toronto police because obviously the kids is in problem, whatever, whatever. You have to talk to the office, the arresting officer. You got to get the information, the file. Like there is a lot that goes into this, you know. So if you guys are seeing me and I'm doing what I'm doing, trust me, it's not about you. I don't really care. <laughs> okay. Like some people like me last year and this year they don't. It's like, you come like Jake. <laughs> All they like me last year, this year they don't like me. I'm like, what? <laughs> So it is what it is. However, we're going to talk about know your rights when it comes to being stopped by the police. Okay. So I write some things down because I want it to stay on track. First thing, it can go two ways. It can be simple or difficult. The simplest way is shut up. You have the right to remain silent. So you say nothing. Okay. The second part could be difficult because trust me, racist cops, he don't like you. Um, he's setting you up, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. We get it. So, uh, but hear me out. If you are stopped by the police, the best thing to do is be polite. Okay. Just calm down. Relax. They're human too. They are doing a job. You speed in, you get stopped. Listen, officer, I was just trying to get home, man. I, I apologize. I'll take my ticket and go. Stop trying to cuss and argue. Where you stop me for and wait, it. You are giving them more reasons to dig, okay? If there's a car accident and they're asking questions and you are refusing, of course you object, you're obstructing justice. So they might try to, you know, charge you with an offense. Now, it's different if they just... You're walking down the street or something and police randomly stop you and asking your question. It's like, really? Officer, I am about my business. I am just trying to get home. Sorry. Another thing is, just be mindful. A lot of people thought I was from Senegal and Eritrea and all this kind of thing. People can mistake you for somebody. I'm from Grenada. No, I'm lying. I was born in Karakou. <laughs> which covers by the island of Grenada because Caracol is really, really small. My dad is from Aruba. <laughs> My mom is Trinidadian. <laughs> and I live in Canada. A whole mix up, okay? So people, you know, young black man, you fit the description, police is stopping you. I get it. It's harassment, but it's how you answer is what you say and how you say it. Are you allowed to give them information like your name and your address? No, but it's how you answer. You can't be like, what the bleep, bleep, and go suck your bleep. Well, trust me, they know what I mean. They do. Bumble club, block, they know what I mean. What's wrong with all you? <laughs> There's hood cops, you know. <laughs> trust me, or they sometimes date hood girls. You know what I'm saying? So they sometimes they know shit. So stop all that. Another thing, stop spitting. Some of you guys want to cuss and spit and act up. That is so disrespectful. You are setting yourself up. First, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say will use against you. Like, hello, shut up. Say nothing. Okay? Now, let's say you're driving to a neighborhood and thing, right? And they stop you. Because, listen, a cops could stop you if they think you're committing a crime, they suspect, or if you're driving, whatever, right? So, let's say you're driving, they pull you over, everything is good. Your license, your insurance, everything is good, okay? And that's another thing we're going to talk about. Now, if, officer, all you need to listen to this, okay? When you ask me for my license, registration, and all this thing, where do you want me to get it? That is on the driver's side, um, the passenger side, okay? I have to lean over to get my information. Why your stuff is on your hand? Like, seriously. Why are you holding on to your weapon? And then my brush fall out because I have to do my wig. And next thing, all they're popping off. Yes. Sometimes. The simplest thing. All it does is, um, I'm tinging. 
Okay, it doesn't happen so much here in Toronto, but, you know, we look to the USA and we see, you know, registration, driver's license, people are leaning over to get the stuff, and police are, put your hands, keep your hands where I can see them. How am I supposed to keep my hands where I can see them when I try to forget my stuff? Like, really? All they need to, like, car people. All they need to put the glove compartment on the driver's side or on the door. Like, like you know what I mean? Keep the thing there because... When the police them come and we have to lean over and all this thing. Or they're always flashing light and all this kind of foolishness. <laughs> like really? Yes, I'm talking about all you. <laughs> Lord. Because sometimes in life you have to challenge. Your, you know what I'm saying? You, you got to. It is what it is, right? So those are the things. Let me see what else I write down. Um, did we talk about a car accident? Yes, be polite, not aggressive. Calm down. And when I talk about hood man and stuff like that, let me tell you something. Snow. All you know, snow? Informer. You know, say that it's not me half a blame. I like boom, boom, nah. Him was from Allen Berry. He's white. He's from a hood. That's my brother's favorite. <laughs> yes. So when I'm talking about hood man, I'm not talking about color, okay? Hood man is the term I use. Like bad boy, gangsters, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. White, black, Chinese, Indian, everybody. They live in the hood. I'm talking to all you. Yeah, th those are the ones I'm talking to. You can be driving down certain location, knowing that there's a high risk, and when you get pulled over by the popo, you're pissed off. Let me tell you something. As soon as that happens, you better call your baby mother so she could call the lawyer. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's always a baby mother <laughs> you could call. Be like, yo. <laughs> Trust me, or an ex, okay? <laughs> Have an ex girlfriend, you can call and say, Yo, <laughs> you know, said I'm why there. <laughs> Trust, she's gonna call a lawyer, make sure everything is good, you know what I'm saying? Now, if you know you have stuff, be nice, sir. I'm telling you, be calm. Do your best so these cops them could just like, oh, okay, brethren, have a nice day. Because once your insurance is good, your license is good, your registration is good, there is no brakes problem or nothing, they have to let you go. So once you know your car is in good condition, just calm the bleep down. Because once you start fidgeting and acting up, they, trust me, principle of human behavior okay sometimes the officers are intimidated especially when they pull over a black man okay and all they're railing up and carrying on they're like lord so see, you see sometimes they have their hand on, on on the thing because they're like any move you make you gotta be careful i know some of be triggering but hear me out i rather tell my story now than have somebody tell it for me my therapist called she's like nanka you're giving too much we have to write a book i said listen to me i could die before this book come out okay as I look along, we try to write this book. As I, when we start the book, it was C19. Then we had what? Omarion. Then we have this. I said, it's 2022. So I'm giving all the pieces and pieces. And when I get the book, it is what it is. I'll dive in more. But part two is coming on child support because all you need to know. No, it is. It is what it is. Tell a friend to tell a friend. I'm your girl, Naim Kanako, sipping and spilling this tea on this lovely Sunday morning. Bye, y'all. All right.